week's episode of the Dense Pixels podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Brad, joined by my co-host, Micah. Uh, hello. You're back on your bullshit, I see. I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, I was like, all right, I, I have this thing. Uh, Marvel's Adventures is what we're talking about. And, um, you know, Black Panther's coming out. And I'm not some huge, like, Black Panther fan, right? Like, uh, you know, I like the movies and all that. But, uh, I, you know, I never picked up a Black Panther comic book or anything like that. It just, you know, just didn't. Um, but, you know, because the movie came out, he's uh, he's incredibly popular. Uh, and um, I said, all right, let me try Avengers. Let me give it a go, right? I haven't played it in months and months and months and months uh so let's see what's happened so i tried it about a week i i got on it about a week ago mm. to kind of get myself into it right and so i said all right let me play with these stupid bow and arrow characters because <laughs> they have bows and arrows for some reason um when you literally have a guy who can command the lightning and and another guy who can like shoot lasers and rockets and energy beams um but you know a stick with a with a rock on the end of it that'll work <laughs> um so i i first tried uh kate bishop and she's she's pretty good she's her her gameplay is you know she has a bow and arrow but her gameplay is all about like positioning and mm-hmm. and uh like if i had to equate her character with uh an archetype of of a, a role playing archetype, she would be like a rogue. She would be like a a, a backstabber, right? Mm-hmm. Like someone who can um, uh, uh, easily maneuver around the battlefield and to as someone with like high evasion, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and she's okay. Um, it, but we come to Hawkeye, and uh, Hawkeye's awesome. Like Hawkeye is like overpowered ironically (laughs) right (laughs) right he's he's incredibly overpowered um he is uh, he is a a a classic ranged character right like he has swords and stuff but he he excels at range and um he is yo like he's really fun to play Mm -hmm. like he's 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 incredibly fun to play um he's also uh, uh, a, a bit of an uh he's he's also a bit of a support class also mm-hmm. so he can do very high damage from afar and he can um he can revive fallen teammates he's got a healing arrow that that he shoots into the ground and it's just a radius of health that just instantly fills your health bar uh if you're in any type of danger so yeah hawkeye's incredibly fun to play um so uh you know all of you all of you hawkeye fans all of you bow and arrow fans uh you got one in the win column because um i will gladly take him over like an iron man any day in that game Mm -hmm. um so uh war for wakanda came out today and i'm not uh terribly far into it Mm -hmm. but i do have some impressions now I don't think this is going to be what the Taken King was to Destiny 2. Let's just put that out there right now. Like, I know there's a lot of like, like they, like uh, Crystal Dynamics is like, this is it. This is the expansion. <laughs> Come on back. Right. And no, this is not, this is not the Taken King. But so far, uh, I see a lot of improvements. Um, but a lot of them are like quality of life improvements. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it, the menus look different, but they're easier to navigate. You can, you can do like mass dismantling. Um, Black Panther as a character is incredibly fun to play. Like that's, that's always been something that I will always tout about this game is that the characters just feel good to play. They're fun to play. It's just, you know, it just gets stale in the same environments and the same enemies and stuff like that. Well, you have new environments, you have a new hub in Wakanda and Wakanda looks very different from everything else. Ironically, the, the, the base game had like areas where 
you're in snow in areas where you're in jungle but they they all have a similar feel because everything is dark Mm -hmm. everything is happening at nighttime or at at dusk everything has like a gloomy feel to it wakanda is beautiful it's lush it's it's green it's like going from gears of war one and two to gears of war three where they were like oh hey here's a bunch of like sun right um so it's 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 a it's a beautiful looking place it it also has a lot of varied terrain right like in in the base game you could pretty much just run to wherever you need to go mm-hmm. and wakanda you have to jump and there's platforming elements otherwise you will die right like there are bottomless pits in wakanda so you have to traverse um uh the terrain and it's it's a lot better um like I said, uh, Black Panther is really fun to play. Um, they got Christopher Judge to do the voice. Mm-hmm. He does a fine job with his like weird like African accent, but he's got like a deep like voice. But it's not like Kratos deep. Like it's trying to, it's trying to. I, I can't even I can't even imitate it. But it's it's deep. But it's it it feels like he has a like a like a frog in his throat, mm-hmm. and and it it's a fine performance, but it doesn't fit the face that uh, that they have for the character of of T'Challa. So it, it's taking me a bit a bit to get used to. Um, but the thing that I f- the the thing that I fear the most is that there won't be a lot of end game content. Mm-hmm. or or like what's going to happen in the end game right like the base game introduced like o- omega level uh hives or what they call them which is basically like a dungeon run and with with modifiers right and um and i feel like it's just going to be more of that and i i i don't know i i i don't i don't know i i feel like i'm going to play this thing this uh expansion um i feel like i'm gonna get black panther up to whatever power level i need to get him up to and i feel like i'm gonna put it down again so uh we'll see but look if you're a if you're a a fan but you were kind of lapsed uh you can hop on like you don't have to pay for black panther Mm -hmm. right like he's fun and he's fun to play uh it's free story content and um but you know they try to sucker you in with all the other stuff. But uh, it's it's more Avengers. It's more Avengers. I, it just won't. Uh, it's it's not going to bring you in. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think it's going to bring any new fans in. Well, and, that, and that's the thing, right? Like it's cool that they're doing the story content, these new characters for free. But is that really? It's a. It's not like you said. It's probably not going to grow your player base too much. And B. It's not going to sustain. Like, right. like like the player like the player base you have like this is this is the destiny problem on steroids because destiny of course is you know famous for like they have that core community that plays all the time and then you have like the people that's you know that are like me who would come back for you know play it hardcore for a month when a new expansion dropped and then like not you know play for two months and then the new expansion will come out and you come back for like a month and then once you exhaust all the content then you kind of drop off again, except that there doesn't seem like there's going to be that much content to exhaust, right? With 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 the Black Panther Panther expansion, once you get past the story, and from what I've heard about the Omega level, uh, like the threat level missions or whatever it is, or whatever it's called, that are like sort of the raidish type of things, mm-hmm. is that the bosses actually do require you to have like a cohesive build of top level gear in order to beat them. Mm-hmm. But the game hasn't given you a reason outside of this to farm for that. And right. I don't know what the rewards are in these missions for doing that. You get exotic level gear. Yeah. So let's say you get gold level gear. You got to have like really good gold level gear. Your gold level gear has to be um, specced perfectly, right? Mm-hmm. Like to, to your play style, to suit your play style, right? Like, but, but you it's random right like and you can spend resources to re-roll but if you don't get something good you're gonna go back to like farming again 
And then God help you if you if you finish one of these Omega level events, um, and your exotic is a shitty exotic. Mm-hmm. Well, shit, yeah, that's what you're doing. And um, and I don't uh, like it's not like Destiny where the exotics. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like the exotics were, they had like standard perks, but like minor minor details mm-hmm. or minor minor twerks. Whereas the exotics all have really interesting perks. And you and they're, they're they're unique. Right. The and they're unique to the thing. Yeah. But but I don't know if these are I think one of them is specifically unique, mm-hmm. but there are others that could be random. I, I, I can't I can't remember. Well and the uh, other thing with Destiny Raids also is that not only did they have like the raid exotic that you could earn from the raid, but they also had a full set of raid armor that right. had special perks and they had a full set of raid weapons that are all like they don't have unique perks on them but they have they they can roll with better perks than the normal weapon pool can or better or different combinations than right. the normal weapon pool could yeah. so um so there was incentive not only to play the raid but to play the raid several times because you would get right. one of these drops uh, upon completing each encounter so you, you were guaranteed like four to five drops per raid if you if you cleared it um and with a low percentage chance of getting the exotic so that that was the real reason to farm it over and over again was to see if you can get the raid exotic um and yeah i i'm not familiar enough with avengers systems to speak intelligently to them but it just doesn't seem like they've done enough to flesh out the gear pool in the game to make it worth burning all these hours all these hours and finding friends to play with that are also the same level as you right you can you can do, um, you know, you can you can jump in with Joe John Q Ram Rando if you want to, but um, I did that once, and the the modifiers for the like some of them are just missions with like extreme modifiers, right? Mm-hmm. And some of them you really need to communicate, and you really need to be on the same page, but not but not to the point where you have to have you have to have a team, but to the point where if somebody's not like participating mm-hmm. then you might as well just you might as well just hop out right and try again so it's it's we'll see we'll see we'll see how long i uh we'll see how long i keep playing this Ooh. um i started playing hades again because it came out on playstation and i gave super giant uh more money more money uh, <laughs> it. uh happy to to say that i cleared my first for the first time on my 10th run um so i still got it apparently i got i gotta tell you i was uh i was a little bummed when they announced that the ps4 and xbox versions weren't going to have the cross save capability so i knew i was gonna have to start fresh and i wasn't sure if i wanted to do that um and so far i've actually really enjoyed starting from nothing and kind of getting to re-embark on things all over again um i'm i'm kind of blowing through the story because i've already experienced it like there's not a whole there's nothing new there yeah but just kind of i don't know like approaching how i'm building out my talents differently and approaching like you know having a a better more streamlined path to like all the upgrades that you can do and things that nature um i think will make it a, a more efficient playthrough this time around and now like i'm already you know grinding out pack the punishment levels and heats and stuff like that so like that's i i feel like i'll get into the end game a little bit quicker yeah this time which has been fun like i said it's it's been it's been just as addicting uh of course it looks great on playstation compared to the switch um and and it's been a good and it's a better controller as well uh to play it on but pro tip uh remap your your uh your your boon summary page uh from the touchpad to a directional button because i kept hitting that fucking thing all the time and <laughs> it's really annoying because it doesn't stop it doesn't like pause the game like it just pulls it up over whatever you're doing yeah so, like if you're in the middle of a fight and you accidentally hit the touchpad that's uh oh that's, that's, sucks. that's bad. <laughs> uh, which happened more often than i care to admit so i was like yeah well, you know what i'll remap this to a directional pad button that i'm not using and we'll just call it a day um I also finally sat down. I've been meaning to get back into Shovel Knight and actually finish that game um, for a long time. And I finally sat down and put in some hours and I did it. So I beat the the main game, um, which had a pretty cool story. 
what I really like about Shovel Knight is it scratches that Mega Man itch, hmm. but it's not like impossibly hard like Mega Man games. Well, it's it's still difficult, but it's Mega Man games often require you to not only execute well, but also like memorize like spawn patterns and things like that, mm-hmm. which is can be a bit obnoxious. Whereas Shovel Knight is just like just execute correctly. Like you're gonna die a lot, but as long as you eventually like get good, like you'll clear this part. It's not it's not it doesn't feel unfair that how Mega Man can feel at times. Mm-hmm. Um and it's it also has more of a play set with the different um the different items which essentially act as like the boss you know powers that you can get in Mega Man. So um the other reason I was excited to play through Shovel Knight is that the Shovel Knight treasure trove package is actually a fantastic value because it's actually like five games in one. Um so I started playing some of the other spin-off games as well, uh most notably King of Cards, uh, which is essentially you're playing as King Knight in the entire game and it's Shovel Knight, but there's also like a triple triad s card game that's in in the mix as well, um, which is called Joustice. The game is all like the the card game is all right. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be, um, which can be frustrating because in order to like hundred percent the game, you definitely have to beat all the people that you can come up against because there's like yeah. special items that you get from them. Um, I do like the gameplay of king knight because he has like this shoulder charge attack that you can charge into guys and when you bounce off of something like he'll twirl in the air and that kind of gives you the the aerial attack that mimics the shovel knight aerial attack that you have but it's a little bit more difficult to execute um and he's a cool he's a funnier character as well like king knight's hilarious (laughs) um so yeah it's it's a good game again wonderful soundtrack uh the game is fun it's a good completionist type of game too like if you're a hundred percenter like it's a very fair hundred percent game so if you're not checked out Shovel Knight, it's been out for quite a while. I would definitely recommend it. It's it's it like I said, it, it'll scratch that old school uh, itch for you. Um, and I don't know why I slept on it for so long because I've owned the game for like four years on Switch. And I just never never put the time into it. It's also not excessively long, which I appreciate. Um, so they're they're pretty good. Uh, it's actually also like pretty banger week this week in terms of games coming out. So Greek. Memories of Azure uh, is coming to PC, PlayStation, Xbox, the Switch. I've heard good things about this. It looks very Trine-like, so if you like those Trine games, then you might want to give this a look. Uh, Humankind, the Sega uh, Civilization knockoff that they're putting out, is out on PC and Stadia. Uh, As Micah mentioned, the War for Wakanda expansion comes out to Marvel's Avengers. Uh, Pile Up Box by Box comes to PC, Xbox, the Switch. Space Invaders Invincible Collection comes to Switch. Hell Architect is on PC. Mortal Shell uh, is getting the Virtuous Cycle DLC on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Uh, Out of Line comes to Switch. Sky Dome comes to PC. Mayhem Brawler comes to PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Uh, Monster Train First Class. I did not know that was releasing. If, if this is Monster Train, um, just in a Switch format, I did not know that was coming out, but that's coming to Nintendo Switch. Uh, Recompile comes to PC, PlayStation, Xbox. Rims Racing on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch. Uh, 12 Minutes, a highly anticipated game, comes to PC and Xbox. It'll be on Game Pass, if you're a Game Pass subscriber. Uh, Arietta of Spirits comes to PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. The Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut is coming to P- uh, to PlayStation, which also means that the new uh, Iki Island expansion is coming out, so look forward for impressions on that from Micah and myself next week. Uh, Heart Chain Kitty is coming to Switch. And just to show that we are truly out of touch with the true mainstream of gaming, I had no idea we knew that. <laughs> that Madden 22 is coming to PC, PlayStation, and Xbox on Friday. This week. Yeah, I, I I totally forgot about who's on the cover. Uh, I think it's both Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady are both on the cover. Wow. All right. Uh, okay. Um, anyway, 12 minutes I'm really looking forward 12 to. 12 minutes should be pretty cool. It's, <laughs> like it's, that's one of the first games that I'm actually quite upset that I don't own an Xbox for. And I feel like that I, that I might have bailed on the Game Pass subscription too early because I feel like this would have worked out okay uh, on my phone. On your Yeah, on your yeah. phone. Yeah. So I'm very much looking forward to 12 minutes. I um, normally 
when you when you scroll through Game Pass, if there's like something coming soon, mm-hmm. they're like, hey, you can you can download it to your machine right now. And I was looking for it, and I was like, yo, where's Twelve Minutes? And um, and I searched for it. Yeah, like, yeah, they were like, not it's twenty four ninety nine. I said, nah, man, nah. <laughs> I was told, I was told that I don't have to pay to to get this game, and I I really want to play it. So. Um, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to 12 minutes. Yeah, should be pretty cool. Um, um no, what else is pretty cool? Our Discord. Uh, you can go to densepixels.com slash fans to uh get invited to our Discord where we talk ab- about video games and wrestling and uh video game news and what also, you're playing. I'm also getting dangerously close to starting an F1 channel in the Discord just because <laughs> I need I need people to talk to about it and i know we have some f1 fans uh, hey discord hey do it there's a there's a fitness channel in the in the nerd apocalypse discord yeah uh, so if 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 uh if there's one there you can certainly make, make an f1 channel i'll probably start getting into the first season of that i have to get into the first season of that show this weekend while uh while i'm away and oh, you're on um, vacation this week i'm on vacation this Fantastic. weekend we're going to Ocean City on Friday. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know what you should be looking forward to? Uh, YouTube.com slash dense pixels. You should go there and you should subscribe and you should you should click the bell icon. And I, I think when you click the bell icon, they give you three different options, and you should pick the one that says all so you get all of our videos and not just like tailored videos to your taste um and and that would help us out uh you can subscribe to all the tmp studios podcasts wherever you get your podcasts uh the nerd apocalypse black on black cinema coming distractions and the weekly preview episode of the look forward political podcast uh you can go to densepixels.com slash premium for five dollars a month or fifty dollars a year you get access to the premium sort of content including the back catalog of the airing of grievances, no time to bleed. The men with the golden tongues, which September, September will be part two of our Metal Gear Solid uh, review series, uh, upstage conversation, and the full episode of the Look Forward Political Podcast. Now, look, um, if you need any more reason to go to densepixels.com slash premium and subscribe, uh, you it, it is this episode of Look Forward uh there's one thing that I, I that i truly love in this world and that's mad brad <laughs> <laughs> mad uh, but brad is such a is such a really like nice guy that matt when mad brad comes out it's like whoa right <laughs> it's like it's like brad is ted lasso and and mad brad is led tasso and and if, you know, for, for you tell Lasso fans, you know what I'm talking about. And when Mad Brad comes out, it is glorious because uh, you don't see Brad really go off on on people or anyone. And and you're saying to yourself, well, what could possibly make Brad mad? Well, you're just gonna have to tune in uh, to find out. So go to dunspreezer.com/slash/premium. Pretty good time. Jay Jay wound me up. It's his fault. <laughs> yeah he was like wow i couldn't believe you got mad <laughs> um the blizzard uh situation continues uh spinning like we promised you there'd be more news and and there was more news uh there's been three notable departures uh from blizzard last week uh luis barriga who is the game director for diablo 4 Wow. Uh, Jesse McCree, who is the lead level designer. And, and you say, wow, McCree, that's that familiar. Yes. Like this, is, like the guy that was the inspiration from the McCree character in Overwatch. And he was working on Diablo 4. And Jonathan LeCraft, uh, who is a level, who's a level designer in World of Warcraft. And apparently, like this is continuing to be more uh, from, from this you know, constant situation that we've, that we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. Um, Bariga in je- in particular is, is incredibly notable because he's kind of been the public face for Diablo four. 
uh, in all the coverage that they've been putting out that's that's led up to it. He's been at Blizzard for 15 years. Um, McCree and LaCraft were two of the dudes that were in that Cosby suite photo. So like 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 we said last week, like if you were in that photo, just start start xing out people, man. Like that's just it's that's gonna fucking happen. Um, and then from reports that sources delivered to uh in, in this case Paul Tassi at Forbes or um yeah Paul Tassi at Forbes um people said that Bariga and McCree could be described as quote super toxic individuals so yeah um look we uh, we've been saying from the get-go that this felt different um than any of the previous situations that we had seen and but mostly because we've seen pressure coming from multiple different fronts on activision from their staff from fans from the media from shareholders you know, you know <laughs> like like from sponsors like like it's it's been a multi-pronged you know pressure campaign being put on by people in in the wake of these allegations and this reporting um and look man bobby Kotick's not trying to lose a job that he makes like 30 million dollars a year from yeah man <laughs> just like do essentially doing nothing right like i'm sure that guy works or whatever right but like no like doing nothing like this is just money pouring in right. and uh yeah man no no when you it, it's funny it's funny seeing you know, these people who are effectively like middle managers in the grand scheme of this giant company. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's funny seeing life come at them fast. Yeah. And uh, so that guy's name, it, it, like he's he's named after the, or the Overwatch character is named after him. Like they got to change that, right? And like, I think his likeness apparently too, to some extent. <laughs> Yeah, like, like I, th I think, I think they also fashioned his appearance after what this dude looks like. Oh well, you got to change that now, right? Like, I mean, uh... <laughs> I guess. No, no to game designers out there. Uh, don't make <laughs> characters in your likeness, perhaps. Just, <laughs> just in case. if you do, if you do, you got to do it like the folks at 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 then Midway. Mm -hmm. right like in mortal kombat 2 when you when you when you uh kill somebody by throwing them in the pit all the severed heads were developers yeah that's what you got to do no you can't you can't make yourself a a, a main character in a game right yeah, and if, then if you're gonna do it you got to be able to easily edit yourself out of the game yeah you'd man be, you'd be or, or at least you know not be a dick that too well i mean <laughs> ideally honestly that would probably be the preferred solution to the whole problem um like i said the bariga news is somewhat surprising because again he wasn't named in any of these original like investigations that had been done um but diablo 4 needs to be a massive success for blizzard like they're going to be putting a shit they've already dumped a shitload of money into the game i'm sure they're going to be putting hundreds of millions of dollars of advertising behind it when the game comes out and it needs to be hugely successful because you know they stumbled big time with warcraft 3 reforged they are sort of stumbling with overwatch 2 because like there's a lot of people who when the preview happened a few weeks ago were just like i don't really know what they're thinking about because like if they're going to make Overwatch 2 part of Overwatch 1 anyway, like, like the, they're changing the multiplayer to match Overwatch 2, so you, they're going to expect people to pay $50 for campaign? Yeah, like why that, am I, yeah. Yeah, why, why am I, why am I paying all this extra money? Right, right, that doesn't make a lot of sense, so people are a little, are scratching their heads about that right now. Um, World of Warcraft is in whatever place world of warcraft is in and like they're kind of splitting their fan base a little bit with that too with the warcraft warcraft um or the wow you know classic that they have going on right now that they're continuing to expand and also final fantasy 14 rising up i'm sure is not doing them any favors not that it's crippling world of warcraft because as we've talked about before like that game even when it's not doing well is still doing better than like 
every other MMO that's out there combined. Yeah. Um, but Diablo 4 needs to be a big, a big fucking deal. And we like we've seen game directors leave companies before game big games release, but usually when they're in the like their last stages, like typically not through the you know, where things are still being ironed out which lets you know that what whatever this guy was doing was probably pretty fucking serious in that case that they were willing to cut bait with him Mm. um when you still need a you know a steady hand guiding the ship essentially uh either that or rod ferguson is going to be stepping up to take a bigger role in the project which is also possible um instead of maybe maybe diablo is just not as far along as we think that could that could be as well like that's something <laughs> people are saying is like a lot of people are speculating that the game will come out sometime next year i don't i don't think that's a that's a slam dunk prediction that you should be making mm-hmm. nope um i don't i also don't think they're gonna release it with a long lead like i think they'll announce a release date like a couple months before that date is gonna yeah. it's gonna happen um but it, it's it's really good to see the continued progress just in, in and i mean it's been less than a month since since the since that new that's that initial story first broke and already so many notable figures from that company have basically been forced to leave like jay on bracket say step down all he wants but we're not we're not idiots um yeah. and it's like i said i i feel i do I'm starting to feel hopeful it's weird I, I i know that it's it's much more fun to be cynical and jaded and we are and we should be because of lived experience um, but it does feel like that we've turned a corner to some extent. Um, the other way I know that we might have turned a corner, I was wondering if we were going to see any more from the Riot Games lawsuit since this flare-up has happened with with uh, Blizzard. Um, and apparently the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing, which is the same agency that is suing Activision Blizzard for all this stuff, is now claiming that that Riot Games didn't tell its staff of their right to speak to the government about harassment and discrimination. (laughs) And so basically now Riot is in hot water uh, once again because of this. Because they they basically, like, like this government organization has gotten a look at some of the settlements that they've made. And we're just like, this is, this is repugnant. Like, this is not good. <laughs> Jesus, man. So, uh, riots disputing these claims, but again, like as we've seen many times before, like generally when there's smoke, there's fire in these situations. Yeah, yeah. Um, good. Keep keep uh, keep them coming. But uh, I want to see more heads on pikes. <laughs> yeah, man. Like you gotta you gotta make examples of people. You have to make examples of people where things aren't going to happen. And look, I, I know you just said, you know, it's good to not be cynical, but I, I can't help it. Um, I, I think that I, I don't know if things will change. Um, things are well, I know things aren't going to do a 180, right? Mm-hmm. This is this is turning a ship. But um, but I really hope that these people being made examples of in a very public way Mm -hmm. um you know puts people on notice puts companies on notice like you can't go around fucking doing this shit to people and i hope it i hope it happens uh in in other countries also ubisoft right like i'm i'm hoping that it really does uh affect some sort of change over there because like like we said a couple weeks ago um but we, you know we ain't, we ain't playing that shit in in america like right. we're not <laughs> like it's i don't it's, i don't think like i'm i would not be surprised for the canadian government to see what's going on down here with that and to kind of like ubisoft's a big deal in canada like it's it's a huge yeah. lawyer they've gotten a lot of government grant money over the years up there um, I would not be at all surprised for them to be like, take a look at how Ubisoft's handled their situations and be like, are you guys really doing enough? Like, let's, you know, show, show us what you got going on. I don't know how Canadian parliament works in terms of like, like I know in America, like I wouldn't shock me at all 
to see like an Ubisoft type of thing be hauled up in front of like 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 a, a body of Congress. I don't know if Canada does the same thing, right? But given how important Ubisoft is to that country, uh, just in terms of how many jobs they provide and and the fact that they're a notable like tech corporation in a country that doesn't have a ton of them, um, it wouldn't be surprised me if there was inquiries made especially in the wake of Ubisoft apparently not doing as much as they alleged that they were going to do when, when they were in the spotlight for the wrong reasons. Yeah. So more to come. Like I said, I'm expecting more Activision news next week. Honestly, like, I don't, I don't think that I, I really don't think that this, uh, that this train is going to stop yet. Um, so I wouldn't, it would not at all surprise me uh, to see it keep on going. And, and again, it's, it's very, it says a lot that you had the, you know, the pre-order beta for Diablo 2 re, uh, resurrected this weekend, and I haven't heard much about that, but I did hear a lot about this story. So, yeah, it's not a good sign for for Blizzard um, if if this is still getting a lot of oxygen, which I'm really, I'm sure they hope is not going to be the case long term, but we'll see. Um, two interesting stories uh, from Paul Tassi at Forbes that kind of ask interesting questions about game pass we we've talked about how game pass is um a a pretty cool thing like it's been a very impactful part of this industry something that i don't think we were fully expecting when they first talked about it i think we were pretty skeptical about it um and i think it's a net positive for gamers for sure but we might now be seeing where it can affect developers so the first story here so people can fly um the developers of outriders does not know how many copies of their game that they've sold (laughs) after four plus months and the reason they know this or the reason they don't know this is that all they know is that they have not gotten paid royalties yet from square the, the game's publisher four copies of the game and royalties don't get paid out in most cases until the game has recouped its development cost in revenue essentially now this is a game that does not have microtransactions it doesn't have like skins that you can buy there's no dlc like it's just the game that's released but what's interesting is that since launch day the game's been on game pass on xbox game pass for free so if you own an xbox and you had game pass you haven't had to pay a cent to experience all that outriders has been able to provide now microsoft does pay out based on how much people are playing outriders apparently if that if that amount is going towards development costs which i would have to assume that it is Apparently, it's not having the dovetail that they were kind of hoping it would have, and Square has not shared with them how many copies the game has sold on other platforms, which seems weird to me. When Microsoft pays out, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm asking, I, I, I don't know, I don't know if you know, but when Microsoft pays out, right, it goes to the publisher, right, and then the publisher it has does. to, yes. and then the publisher has to pay the essentially the subcontractor right correct yeah so 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 the way and and this is very very high level broad brushing kind of shit the way that things generally work especially when you're contracting a developer in this case people can fly is not owned by square they were you know they square is publishing a game they're developing is that square says all right we're going to pay people can fly x amount of dollars and to publish this game and those are kind of the development costs. Like they're basically paying to develop the game. Then people can fly, pays their employees and, and yada, 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 yada. And, and Square is also paying to produce the game, like in terms of like the actual physical production of discs and things like that. And they're paying to market the game. Okay. So the game comes out and Square essentially gets all the money that comes in because they are paying the developer to make, to make a product for them. The developer makes the product. And then Square collects money. The way most game companies work is that built into the contract, once the game makes back its development costs, 
which is what Square paid out to produce the game, then the developers basically get like a bonus percentage of revenue. So like if the game, if the development cost is $5 million and the game had made $10 million, then the first $5 million would cover Square, and then the last, the next $5 million would be split in some percentage between Square and, and the developer. Mm. And it would and it would stay that way in perpetuity, as far as I understand. Um, so what this story is saying is that because people could fly have not been paid royalties yet, it still means that the game is technically underwater in terms of development costs. They they spent more to create the game than they have earned from the game so far. Hmm. And what's interesting wow. about that is that this is because of the three major platforms that the game released on. Revenue is only being generated really from two of those platforms. And really, you could consider one of them not count PC not counting either. Because again, if you had a if you got Xbox, Game Pass, if you got a Windows PC, then you could have played that shit for free if you had Game Pass anyway. Right. Right. Like it makes no sense to not have Game Pass Ultimate right. if you play games on PC. And then the way that Microsoft works in terms of how they pay out people for Game Pass is you and again we don't have concrete data to go by this but this is generally how it's understood to work is that essentially so like you're paying microsoft the, your game pass subscription microsoft keeps 30 percent of that money and then the other 70 percent they basically look at okay here's all the games that were played on game pass in like this time period in a month's time period and literally the percentage of playtime that you're that you the publisher's games made up of that playtime that's the percentage of that 70% cut that goes to you because you're bringing people to the service or at least, again that, that's how i understand it to work hmm. in terms of of, of this cuz it's not like a free game like it's not like a games with gold where you're just paying the publisher a flat sum to give away free copies of the game. In this case, like you are saying, hey, we are paying you based on your value to this service directly for how, how many people you, you are bringing on board. So Square is getting paid for people that play Outriders, for people that play Final Fantasy 15, for, you know, for, for all the games they publish, they're getting money back from Xbox. Now, what I don't know is how that revenue translates onto the development costs towards outriders you know what i mean that's a, that's a weird system man yeah. like that's that's um yeah because essentially uh you know unless unless there's some sort of itemized you know right. thing when you get your payout you don't know what's uh, what your what percentage of your payout goes specifically to outriders like this is a weird this is a very weird system man yeah this is a very weird like like it's not, I always thought it was a little more like in construction, right? Mm. Where you have a, you have a manager who has a, who hires subcontractors to perform work. Subcontractors require a certain amount uh, to get started and then they get paid, you know, but, but, a, but a fixed price is negotiated. Like mm. you're going to make X amount of money once everything is completed not this like you know i get okay but if it does well enough then you get royalties and and this is this is a this is a very odd system to me. yeah it's it well it's it's a brave new world right like like this is yeah. kind of the first time that we've really come across something like this in this industry so and, and again what i talked about is somewhat speculative um, we don't know for sure because Microsoft doesn't advertise their pay structure and develop and publishers are mum about it as well. Um, so we don't know for sure that that's how it works, but that's that's how I have understood it to work based on people that are in the know um, mm. in the industry. So the other side of this equation is that Microsoft um, also has Hades on Game Pass as well. So if you have Game Pass, then you you could have been playing Hades all weekend on your Xbox for no extra cost. Um, and one of the things that Microsoft touts, and one of the things that they advertise to publishers who put their games on Game Pass, is they say, well, this will help 
sell more of your games to other people. Like this will help actually boost sales of your games. And you might be saying, well, how does, how does that work? Well, their philosophy is, is that if you put a game out that's on game pass, are people paying you to play it right now? No, they're not paying you to play this game. However, they're discovering it, it, it's discoverability. It's exposure. Yeah. In, it's yeah. It's the yeah. bullshit that the NFL yeah. does for the Super Bowl halftime show, right? right. Like they don't pay <laughs> the performers to perform at halftime. They say, Oh, well, you're the eyes of America are on you. This is, we're giving you a free 20 minutes to, to perform and to advertise and to right. get yourself out there. And so, and so they're saying there are other games in the genre that people will discover that they might not have discovered before because they played this game or they might check out some of your other games that you have because they say, oh this developer seems legit so like if you play Hades maybe you'll go back and play Transistor maybe you'll go back and play Bastion you know if you if you, if you miss those games that kind of thing which you do have to buy actually Bastion I think is also on Game Pass right now so that's, that's <laughs> a good point um so they they advertise that actually being on Game Pass will help your sales overall and, and some people too, they're like, you know, they might get the game and be like, oh, this game's fucking legit. I know it's not going to be on Game Pass forever. So let me just buy it now because I think it's awesome. Like, or, you know, whatever. So in the UK, uh, they've, they basically released their weekend sales data for Hades because Hades just came back out, you know, on, on these, on these platforms last week. So 70% of the boxed sale copies in the UK for Hades were on PlayStation 5. And then a further 23% were on PlayStation 4. So if you're quick to do math, that's a combined total of 93% of all physical copies of Hades were sold for PlayStation, leaving just 7% sold for Xbox. Hmm. And obviously that's not that shouldn't surprise anybody because everyone that has an Xbox can play Hades for free. Right. Now the point is made in this article, and it's true that if the revenue that Supergiant is getting from Microsoft is equivalent to the 93% that, you know, the, uh, from the revenue that Sony's getting from 93% of box copy sales and also copies purchased through the PlayStation Store, um, then they really don't fucking care, right? Because, like, money's money. It doesn't really matter where it's coming from. But as we just talked about, because of how the pay structure works for Game Pass, who the fuck knows how much money they're actually, how much revenue they're actually going to get from it. Plus, it's also something that's going to diminish over time because are they, are they getting a shitload of hours played on Game Pass like this weekend and probably next? Absolutely. Like they have the zeitgeist of, of the release behind them and, 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 and they're popular and people know about it. But there is, there is, you know, depreciating returns on that. I feel, I feel like it's going to, it's, it's always going to be like a high spike and then it'll tail off and, and level out unless Hades is just like people, you know, so many people are discovering the game for the first time, which is very mm -hmm. possible because the game's only been out on PC and switch to this point um, that it stays so high, but I have a feeling that Outriders had a huge spike and then a, and then a huge fucking yeah, and then a plummet. Valley, right shortly thereafter um and so long term i don't know how sustainable that is now again i don't think hades is going to be on game pass forever but how long is it going to be on game pass and how many potential sales will they have cost themselves at the end of the day when it does leave game pass like how many of those players that played it on game pass are then going to give super giant 25 dollars to continue playing the game so here's the thing right like this is not what I'm about to suggest is not consumer friendly, mm -hmm. but I think game pass games are on there for like three or four months. Right. I mean, you can get through a game in a few months and not have to pay for it. Right. Is the solution to shorten that window. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, do you do you keep a game on there for a month and and hey i i'm glad you really liked it now it's time to like support this developer or like like do you make it like an extended demo basically like right. or, 
Like I, I don't, I, I don't. That's I don't the know. only solution I, have, I can think. I of. feel so. So I, I have a what I what might be a win win solution. So I, I like your idea. So like, like let's just run with Hades because Hades is is the game. What if Microsoft did a deal where it's like, okay, Hades will be on Game Pass for the first month that it's out, and I even think a month might be too long. I say maybe two weeks. You mm-hmm. do like like two week launch. Got Game Pass. Um, actually, it's got to be a month because otherwise, Game Pass is now losing its value. Yeah. If if yeah. it's not if it's not at least a decent amount of time, even even with Microsoft stuff being on there in perpetuity. So let's just say a month, and then it it you know it leaves Game Pass. You have to buy the game. But what if they did like a Game Pass discount? Like if you're a Game Pass member, you get twenty five percent off yep. of this game that used to be on Game Pass. So then now. Yeah. Instead of, you know, instead of, and, and Microsoft eats that, like Supergiant's not responsible for taking that lost revenue. Like Microsoft just eats that 25%. Because that way Microsoft's still making five because there's a 70-30 split in, in the marketplace. But they've gotten the Game Pass money up front. And now they're still getting 5% off of this game that much more people are going to buy because like they're, they're not ready to leave the game behind yet, especially a game like Hades that has a very long end game to it. And, you know, is fun to play in perpetuity. I don't know if that works for every game, um, but I feel like that there's a lot of games that that would work really well with. And I feel like that kind of adopting somewhat of a hybrid solution works because that way, like if you're curious about a game, you can legitimately try it before you buy it and play a good chunk of it and you'll know whether or not it's something you want to put money down towards yeah at that point yeah. i don't know like i said I, I i don't know what the solution is um i would be curious to just know more you know what i mean like like i wish there would there could be a developer out there that could speak kind of candidly about their experiences so far especially a game that started on game pass on release that is not there anymore i'd, I'd be really curious to know kind of their thoughts on that whole process yeah because it's 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 like the netflix thing right like how do you make money like how i want to know how people make money on doing this stuff because like you said when when this stuff first uh came out we were like oh this ain't gonna last it's too good to be true Mm -hmm. you let somebody play games for a flat fee and and but it's still here and it's still a tremendous value so I just need to, I need to know how this company is able to sustain itself or how, like, what is the incentive for the developer to put their games on here unless you're like some super indie developer? Well, and that's like, the other thing too, like Hades might not care about this because like you said, they are a small company. They only employ like 20 people or however big Supergiant is. Yeah. Um, whereas Outriders, it's a much bigger deal because they're dealing through a major publisher. So like yeah, man. Not, it's not apples and oranges necessarily <laughs> in terms of the, in terms of what the money means uh, to those two studios. Yeah, man. Like if you're going through a publisher, I, I, I don't know. I feel like I would be a bit upset with that publisher. Right. Like, like, uh, like do it with like books. Mm-hmm. Like they, they don't like, penguin publishing doesn't have a, a, a wouldn't wouldn't strike a deal with barnes and noble to give away a book or like, like i don't know it just doesn't it just doesn't uh well then you'd have to take the book away all right that's a bad analogy but yeah. <laughs> I, I just don't i just don't understand how it works um you know what else i don't understand how uh amazon makes money um they, they don't that's the that's the big secret is that they, oh is that, is that, is that they lose money and then they don't pay taxes and then they they make money because they don't pay taxes so they generate like a shitload of revenue god damn it uh look i'm not one of those eat the rich people right but like I, i'm one of those pay your taxes rich people type of type of person right like i don't think like anyway go to densepixels.com slash amazon um before you eat the rich you can go to densepixels.com slash amazon and fatten up the rich by buying a bunch of their stuff through densepixels.com slash amazon so that when you go to eat them they'll be nice and big and fat and then you can sustain yourself 
off of their entrails. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly the most morbid Amazon rant <laughs> in our entire life. Um, Cam asks a host of wrestling questions in the post office. He says, SummerSlam slash TakeOver is this weekend. Uh, do we think Cena gets number 17 now that Flair is AEW bound? Uh, still no. I still think no. we're going to keep that on Roman Reigns. Um, is this Adam Cole's last match before crossing into the Forbidden Door? I really hope not. I heard they offered him a million dollars. Who, WWE did? Yeah. They offered him a million dollars. I feel like AEW could offer him a million dollars. <laughs> and I don't know if it's a million dollars, you know, throughout the contract or a million dollars per year through a contract, but they, they, I think they realize his value. Like they were talent hoarding and that's why you see all these like cuts. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, all this stuff was inevitable. Um, but but he is one that that they recognize as like, you know, we really can't let this guy go. Yeah. So I think they're going to do whatever they need to do. And I don't think that uh, I don't think that uh, uh, his girlfriend being over in in AEW is going to be un, is going to want to make him go over there. Right. Like, no, I, don't, I, I don't think so either. Um, Here's the thing with Adam Cole, man, like that dude has the potential to be Seth Rollins. Like he has potential for the Seth Rollins career, but better. Like, like, yeah. like he has a higher ceiling than Seth Rollins, which is saying something because Seth Rollins ceiling and what he's achieved already is pretty fucking high. Yeah, man. Like I see him having the Shawn Michaels level of a Seth Rollins career. You know what I mean? Like he's, uh, he's 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 fucking good man yeah. like he really is so no i think ww is going to do everything they need to do to keep him yeah uh in that company which is a win-win for him and his girlfriend that's true too <laughs> like, <laughs> come a, on man. Rich man um <laughs> yeah i really hope they just don't they don't fuck that up i i, I <laughs> i'm gonna be I'm, I'm a dick for saying this AEW still feels small time to me. It does. I'm sorry. It does. <laughs> it does. I'm sorry. Like, like I get the fact that they're a that they are a legitimate professional wrestling organization. They are the closest thing we've had to WCW since WCW folded. But they still feel really <laughs> small to me. Yes, they do. Is it? They, they is still it? Feel small to me because they do things that small companies do. Is it the gimmicks? Right? Like, is it like? Is no, because like, like I, I find that actually a little endearing. Uh, when I say a bit of a throwback, when I say no, when I say gimmicks, I'm I'm not talking about like individual wrestler gimmicks. I'm talking about things like working with other companies, like the, like emulating the territory yes. days because yes, the territories that, like, were. You yeah, know. that that's that's part of it. Um, the fact that they are doing, like, so like you remember when Impact did like the six sided ring. Or TNA did like the six sided yeah, ring, yeah, and they're like, that. oh, like this is what differentiates us. Like, I feel like that AEW's version of that is like wins and losses matter, and we have rankings and so like I'm just like <laughs> professional wrestling though. Like, if I want rankings, like I'll go watch UFC. Like, uh, like I'm not, I don't <laughs> tell me good stories. Like, I like, like I don't need, I don't need a fucking like the top five to show you know to, to let i mean the next i mean I don't know. it's just it's just a it's just a storytelling device right like it's a storytelling sure. device that makes a little more sense than just i'm gonna challenge you now right like like uh, we, hey randy we're rk bro and now we're a, we're a new tag team again and we're gonna just go for the gold right but like i also feel like that, that that you're creating a higher degree of, of difficulty for yourself when you do that mm -hmm. you know what i mean and it's not even consistent christian is not the fucking like has not yeah, wrestled enough <laughs> matches in AEW to be the number one contender. If, if, <laughs> like, like if you're gonna have this, be consistent. And then, like I said last week, like they do the shit where, you know, they fucking talk, you know, slyly talk shit on their competition all the time, which and WWE doesn't even have to acknowledge their fucking presence, like 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 on TV at least, like on, they they do in like media calls and stuff like that. Listen, they still feel small. I know that I'm the dick for saying that. I acknowledge that. But because they feel small, I feel like Adam Cole deserves a bigger stage than AEW. <laughs> that, 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 that's the roundabout point that I was that I was getting to. 
with that uh with that uh with that uh that take um and then cam also mentions omega lost the impact title to christian is this a sign of things to come in all out or simply to pop a rating on rampage's debut absolutely rating pop and in, in, in fact solidifies christian not winning the aw title you're not going to have christian beat you're not gonna have fucking christian cage beat kenny omega two times in a row in no. championship matches that's insane like that no. that's an insane thing to think if you're if you're impact by the way i was thinking about this the other day your impact right now don't you like don't you kind of look like shit like like you're like your <laughs> like your main championship has now been won by two consecutive guys that technically don't even work for your company it's and uh, has been held for months it's the it's the nfl game pass exposure thing man is it because i don't i don't <laughs> has, has been linked to AEW had an appreciable impact Im- on their rate <laughs> i can't imagine it has but the fact that we are here talking about anything involving impact wrestling uh-huh b- proves that point right like I don't watch Impact. I don't even know where to find Impact. <laughs> I could not tell you. <laughs> like, I like, I like, I like wrestling, but wasn't, I'm not wasn't like. It on, wasn't it on like Destination America once upon a time? Something then, like, like that, I guess. I, I have no I've, idea. I have no man. idea what it's on right now. Like, like, like you, like you could tell me that, like, oh, it's on YouTube, and I'd believe you. Like, if they just, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be but, like, yeah, sure, absolutely. But I, I feel like, I feel like that's why they did it, right? I feel right. like that, you know one for you for the hardcore hard hardcore wrestling fans who just get off on like all this crossover stuff i think they're doing it for them Mm -hmm. i think uh aew is you know getting some they they struck some sort of deal where they get paid to to brandish this title on on a real television station (laughs) and not public access or whatever the fuck impact comes on (laughs) And, um, and you know, if you end up being a hardcore wrestling fan, maybe you'll do the, you know, maybe you will try to seek it out. I, I don't know. Yeah, but, um, but so far, like you're like what your this exposure has been your guys getting dimed out <laughs> by by the competition and your titles being defended on their TV show against two of their wrestlers. What they need to do is right. They need to introduce more. If they're going to do all this crossover stuff, you gotta you gotta cross over your guys. You gotta get your guys onto their stage. Right. the the only The only guys who haven't looked like dogs, from my understanding, is the Good Brothers, and that's because right. they already have they have the history. Right. They, they are. <laughs> they literally are what your analogy for Adam Cole was. They are too big for impact. Yes. Like, I don't know why they're even like, they're too big for impact. So, uh, look, I'm, I am, I am excited for, uh, I, I watch AEW. Um, mm-hmm. I, I am excited just cause it's different. Uh, I'm excited for, uh, all out. Um, I'm excited to see what Daniel Bryan will do. How, like how it would look mm-hmm. in a in a in a new in in a new environment because it has a different look it's not as produced it's not as well produced as as w uh, we so uh i'm i and i'm looking forward to seeing how his style may or may not change mm-hmm. um i don't really care about CM Punk like it'll be nice to see him but like I don't really I don't really give a shit like CM Punk being there feels like you know where the where the big boys play with themselves right like they're there it seems like the old guard is coming yeah. to you know it feels like that Goldberg shit and I, I'm not into I'm not into that so I don't know we'll see yeah we will see please don't leave WWE Adam Cole <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, Casa asks a weird question in light of a weird indie game coming out. Uh, describe your type in an ideal video game romantic partner. If they transformed into a specific weapon, some of the time. And alternatively, if your life had to follow that rule into what sort of weapon do you think you or your partner or your pet would transform? Mike, do you know what game Casa is referring to? Because I do. 
um bionic commando no because that um, was his that was his wife inside his bionic arm yes um no there's a game that came out on switch last week uh that came out during their nintendo like indie direct which we did not talk about uh called boyfriend simulator which is like a dating sim combined with a third person action game where like your boyfriend literally transforms into like a weapon essentially and and and, but you still do like the dating sim part with like the human analog version of the weapon apparently the game's actually pretty good but there's some like problematic things with it as well is it called boyfriend simulator yeah i think it's called boyfriend maybe it's not boyfriend simulator what the fuck's it called boyfriend boyfriend dungeon hang on a second boyfriend yeah boyfriend dungeon i'm sorry I, I, I'm so I'm so I'm so inundated with these fucking simulator games <laughs> that uh, I just assumed that it was, um, but yeah. So this is a game that came out. Apparently, uh, a lot of folks really like it a lot, and so yeah. All right. Um, so what would uh, what would my wife turn into? Um, or what type of what type of uh, partner? do you gravitate towards in a video game and what weapon would they be oh okay what type of partner do i gravitate toward in a video game uh honestly it it really depends on the game um uh the last game that i played that had a slew of romantic partners for me to choose from because i was the boy in a japanese uh, rpg and therefore i get my choice of all of the women um was the was the kind of smart uh kind of uptight prissy character on the outside who had like an inner badass in her that's I, actually that's, that's kind of the that's kind of my wife so uh i would think that that would be it um in mass effect it was like it was well it was everybody in mass effect <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah uh so in that case um if they had to transform into a specific type of weapon um i i don't know like a blade of some sort (laughs) this is is very this is a very odd question i need to see video of, of boyfriend dungeon I I almost feel like if I played Boyfriend Dungeon, I would actually choose my boyfriend more based on the weapon. Yeah, than the dude. Be, instead of instead of the the, per, the like the personality behind the character. Um I so like I don't know, like I've I still got Hades on the brain right now, so like I can't not think of Hades weapons. And my favorite weapon in Hades is the bow. So like something that's like an like a crossbow of some kind with some sort of power shot ability i don't know what necessarily boyfriend personality that would translate to wow this is this is hilarious yeah Uh, (laughs) i'm looking at just like images of like um of 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 these swords turning into beautiful men (laughs) Uh, yeah, I would probably, I would probably do that. Right. Like I would, I would in, in like a, in like a, in like an MMO I, I, or an RPG, I generally gravitate toward, uh, monk characters because they fight with their fists. Uh, so it would be, um, so the, the weapon equivalent would be, uh, like knuckles. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like knuckles people who would turn into, uh you know some knuckles are like very aggressive and in your face right they're they're very like no nonsense like blunt right because they do blunt damage so yeah yeah i think my romantic partner would turn into and that's what and that's what the fuck makoto trans uh uses she uses knuckles so there you go There, there you go knuckles uh johnny asks simple question nintendo online will drop the game boy slash gba library next month for its anniversary yes or no when when have we ever known nintendo to do the sensible thing that everybody would want them to do (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, Nintendo is very aloof when it comes to like their their anniversaries and stuff. They they would be very bad boyfriend dungeons. I mean, they, they again, this is this is the company that did that's had a note a, a, a notable recent number of anniversaries. Uh, they did jack shit for Luigi. They released a Mario game for a limited time for the Mario 35th anniversary. And they released, they re-released an HD version of like the least beloved mainline Zelda game for everybody instead of the Wind Waker, Switch, you know, Wii U port, which everyone actually wants. <laughs> so no, they, they're not going to do what you want because it's Nintendo. And then uh, Mark asks, since Terrence is not here to stab a disc, uh, what game are you most disgusted with yourself for paying actual cash money? Now, it, it bears reminding that Terrence didn't stab Ninja Gaiden 2 because he was disgusted for paying with for, by paying for Ninja Gaiden 2. He did it because the game br took him to his breaking point to beat it on Master Ninja Mode. So that when he when he did beat the game, he had to literally destroy it. <laughs> to, to prove his supremacy over the game as a as a sim, symbol of his mastery of the game his domination oh, of the game yeah it, it was it was it was more of a it a was cathartic release essentially yeah it was the equivalent of like having a bear head on your wall right <laughs> like, you, like you, you had to you, you went toe to toe you took out this fucking bear and then and then that was a trophy uh, and that was his uh, profile image on my phone for a very, very long time. <laughs> um, what am I? But in terms of games that I'm disgusted with, I mean, off the top of my head, right? Like Superman 64. <laughs> like I was so like that was the first game that I ever returned. And the people at uh, EB Games and Owings Mills Mall were like, wow, it was that bad. You were just here 20 minutes ago. Oh, I did one of those too, actually. I remember the first year that, uh, so so M MVP came out, reinvigorated, e you know, EA's baseball franchise. Mm -hmm. And then ML and then Major League Baseball did a deal with 2K Sports to do exclusivity. So there was no MVP baseball in 2006. So I was like, all right, well, guess I'm going to have to buy 2K6 um to play a baseball game this year and i bought it and i literally got home and i started playing it and it was so bad that i literally went back to the GameStop an hour later and was like i i need to get rid of this game can i return it and they're like no you can trade it in i'm like how much do i get and they're like 20 bucks you paid 40 and i'm like that's fine this game sucks. <laughs> this game is terrible so I, I've, I've done that once um like i said i i still feel somewhat shamed that me, a real gamer man, has put in the amount of time that I put into in all these fucking Picross games. I, I they're, they're like, there's some, <laughs> there's some, like, I just bought the Sega one and I've, I've already cleared all the basic Picross puzzles. Like, it's already, <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm a little, I, I always feel a little disgusted with myself, but then again, I'm only paying $10. For those games and i'm getting hours of enjoyment out of them so i can't feel yeah. too upset about it like i'm getting yeah. good value for money i mean that's you know a guilty pleasure is one thing right yeah. like like something that you're just like what the what the hell was i thinking oh i've got one of the i got another one of those when i bought skyrim digitally on the playstation 4 like the skyrim <laughs> hd remaster like i was like you know what i'm ready to play this again Maybe I'll beat it this time, and I and I bought it, and I paid sixty dollars, and I downloaded it, and I played through like five hours. I killed the first dragon. I made it to fucking Whitehall, and I was just like, you know, I really don't want to play this. <laughs> Why did I? Uh, I can't believe I spent sixty dollars on this game that I can't get rid of now. It's now it's now in my library forever. <laughs> That's and occasionally, funny. like as I'm scrolling through, if I need something new to play, I'll be like, Skyrim. I'm like, no, no, we're not, we're not, we're not, do, we're not doing that again. She's like, I can't possibly <laughs> want to, I can't pop like because you'll download it and then you'll play. I'm like, God damn, this was a real fucking waste. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that that's that's another one that I can't believe I bought Skyrim again. <laughs> and and then basically didn't play it. So there you go. So 
Cool. Well, that is uh thank you guys for the uh, last minute post office questions. We, we put the call out while we were recording the show, actually. Um, so appreciate uh, getting those couple in. Uh, don't forget to join the discord. You can do that at densepixels.com slash fans. Again, if you want me to do an F1 channel, let me know. Uh, and we will definitely talk some F1 in the discord. Um, if you want like other channels about other stuff that we also talk about often on the show, like soccer, like I'm totally down for that as well. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur knocking off the defending champs this weekend. One nil, fucking great match. Who are the defending champs again? Manchester. I, 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 I ah, Manchester City. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open my ESPN app and I'm going to follow Chelsea since that is my that is my team now. They have uh, just so you know they have they have like butt ass ugly kits this year. Chelsea does. Oh God! All right, I'm going to. That's enough. Why they they went they went with a really bizarre pattern on their kits. I I see that uh, that your team and my team played earlier this month to a two two tie. Yeah, well, but it was, it was a friendly though, so that doesn't really that that's like an exhibition game, a preseason game. Ah, uh, when does the season start? Oh, I'm the, really the season started this past weekend. Like like this past weekend was the first round of of matches. Okay, and what le- is this in some sort of league or because I need something I need something to watch and I'm 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 not gonna do football this year. Oh, um, coming, coming so, around coming around to Brad's side of the uh, yeah. So I'm no. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do real football. I think and you can you can blame you and Ted Lasso are the reason why I'm trying. to <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, so Micah, let me though you've already made the decision. I'm gonna do what a great salesman does and close the sale, even though you've already made the decision. <laughs> So the thing that's amazing about watching, especially the Premier League specifically, is that it comes on the weekends, like most of the game, most of the matches that Chelsea play in the Premier League are on Friday or on Saturday or Sunday. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because Chelsea is one of the most popular teams, they're on TV all the time. Like you don't have to like scour for their games, which is also always great. Plus, you're not you're not in danger of seeing them get relegated because they're never going to be like that bad. Um, And what's great about soccer is that you book two hours of your weekend morning, usually, by the way, uh, two hours of your weekend morning. You're watching football the whole time. The only break in between is the 15-minute halftime where they cut it to the studio to talk about what you just saw, that kind of thing. But the, mm-hmm. but the action is continuous. There's no commercials. Like, like it's not like, oh, we kicked off, and now we're going to go to commercial, and then we're back for five minutes. Then we go to commercial. Like, it's, you don't see that. Um, it's fucking great. The only downside is that sometimes you got to get up at like seven o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Like that's no fun, but when you got kids, it's, it's less, less irritating because they're up anyway. Um, so it's fine. So, so again, great choice. I'm very excited about this. Uh, the season just started, um, Chelsea won their first match. Uh, yeah, they beat C palace. I don't know. Crystal Crystal palace. Okay. And I see they play Arsenal next on Sunday. They do, and, and that'll be a game that I'll be incredibly excited uh, to watch Chelsea do well in because Arsenal is my blood rival, um, <laughs> who I, who I, who's, whose success I, I never want to see. Um, and the other thing that's cool for you, Micah, as a new Chelsea football supporter, is that they are expected to contend uh, for the top title for, or for the championship in the Premier League this year. They also won the European Champions League last season as well and because you work at a job that doesn't require you to actually do actual work you can watch champions league matches because they come on like wednesday afternoon okay Uh, oh i don't like yeah i don't like their uh their uniforms yeah their their their, their home kit this year is kind of balls um they always have a blue home shirt but the pattern that they use this year was just garbage like it kind of sucks um plus their sponsor like their their sponsor that they have is has a weird logo like it just looks odd on a soccer jersey um but like i said i i'm i'm not even mad that you're picking a team that tottenham is antagonistic with like it's i'm just happy that you're here um so yeah so like you said you could totally get into this and yeah just just look out for chelsea uh watch them kick the shit out of arsenal next week because they will uh chelsea also just uh signed uh romelu lukaku from inter uh, himself a former Chelsea man that they let get away uh, but he's one of the best strikers in the world right now so they should have a pretty strong 
uh, attacking line, and they have American uh, Christian Pulisic that plays for them as well. All right. Well, I am I am legit going to give this a go. Um, uh, now, I, I mean, I don't I don't want to I don't want to keep you too long, but like, there's the Premier League, there's the UEFA. Like, like I, which one do I need to pay attention? To? The, the the Premier League is the most important thing to pay attention to. That that's that's the that's Chelsea's main league that they play in it's the one that plays on the weekend pretty much every weekend um and they're there that's the one that you're gonna care the most about in All general. Right. everything else is kind of like a bonus on top of that but the premier league is like the main fucking deal the champions right. league is also a pretty big deal um but it doesn't become as big of a deal until you get into the knockout round which doesn't happen until like february so you have, so you have a lot of time to to care about that now, I thought the Champions League was where you go when you get relegated out of the Premier League. Ah, a, a fair a fair bit of confusion. So England names their leagues very stupidly. So okay. before, it used to be like, you know, the, you know, League 1, League 2, League 3, League 4. Like, it was easy to keep track of. Mm-hmm. When the Premier League came into existence, they had to revamp like what those things were called so the second tier of english football is actually called the football championship which is very confusing because that makes it sound more important than the other league yeah (laughs) but it's actually less important and chelsea does not is not in the football championship because they're better than that league is the uefa champions league is a tournament that collects the best teams from all of europe and okay. puts them into a midweek uh, competition that's quite similar to the World Cup. Just imagine if the World Cup took place over six months and only during the middle of the week. That's what the UEFA Champions League is. Okay. Chelsea won that tournament last year. They were the champions of Europe, which is a very big fucking deal as well. Um, and so they will be playing in that competition. That that gets started in October. Um, so, you, again, a lot of time before you have to worry about that. Well, okay. later on, we'll talk about the domestic cups and stuff like that, which again, don't worry yourself with yet because Chelsea is not going to be a factor in those until much later on. So for right. right now, Premier League, and you're coming in also at the end of the transfer window. The transfer window is like the trade deadline in soccer. Mm-hmm. All the moves have to be done by a certain by the end of August, essentially. Um, so you can be excited to see if Chelsea gets any new any new players coming into the squad and that kind of stuff. So all right. Great, great time to join up. It's a fantastic time to join up. And then right. we can have the uh, so so like men and blazers like with the two hosts of that show when their teams play each other, um, they nickname the match El Blazerico because all the great soccer rivalry matches have fun nicknames. Yeah. Um. So we'll need to figure out what the nickname for Chelsea Tottenham is going to be now that you're going to be a Chelsea supporter. All right. Like all like, right. like 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 the El Dense, Dense Pixel Co is probably <laughs> where we're going to be where we're going to be leading. Um. To, to kind of talk about that or, 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 or like the dense pixels Derby or something, something of something of that nature. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very excited. As you can tell, I cannot wait to talk with you more about this. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a go because, <laughs> uh, because I, I, you know, I hear you talk about it. This Ted Lasso show is really good. My wife is trying to get my son into soccer. God bless so. Ted Lasso for, 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 showing, <laughs> for showing the light. And you know, what's, you know what's so funny? The Ted Lasso character started as just a way to advertise. Yeah. Like it was just yeah. It was a, it was it was an ad campaign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to, to get dumb Americans to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny to me. So. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the show uh, wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you go to youtube.com slash dense pixels and subscribe there as well. And then follow us on Twitch. I am Dense Pixels Brad, Terrence Zapparition 410, and Carrie is up. It's Carrie. Uh, that's it for us this week. Thank you guys very much for watching and listening, and we will see you all the next time. See you. You're watching the Dense Pixels YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button while you're here and make sure you check out our weekly podcast where we discuss the latest gaming news and our impressions on what games we've been playing.